Okay, so we're on the last topic in chapter seven, which is talking about the second method that we often classify reactions. And the way we do this is it's based on what the atoms actually do in the reaction. The way this is different from the other reactions where we talk about precipitation or acid base or, or redox is that we usually use these letters A, B, C, D to talk about what atoms actually do in these reactions. We divide them into these five different categories. The first one is what we call combination, which just means that you have one element combining with another element to form a compound, something bigger. So A plus B goes to AB. Or you might have an element combining with a compound to form a bigger compound. A plus BC goes to ABC. Decomposition is a reaction where you take something bigger and you break it into things that are smaller. So it's the opposite of combination. So AB can be broken down into A plus B or ABC could be broken down into A plus BC. Combustion, as we talked about before, is a reaction where oxygen gas is involved. Specifically for this category, we would take things that are called organic compounds, and I'll explain what these are in, in a little bit, plus oxygen to form specifically these two products, CO2 and H2O gas carbon dioxide and water. Single displacement is a reaction where we have A plus BC. So A is an element, BC is an ionic compound. And then that A displaces or replaces the B to form AC plus B. And double displacement is this, this pattern right here, AB plus CD, and then the two cations are swapped to form AD and CB. We already talked about double displacement in detail in the prior videos. The two subcategories of double displacement, of course, is precipitation and acid base. Now we're going to take a look at the other types of reactions that are listed here. So combination reactions, also known as synthesis, is where you combine two things to form something bigger. So there's different ways this can happen. So I'm just listing these here. One is you have a metal and a non-metal, and you combine these two to form an ionic compound. So these are examples of that. You have a metal, which is magnesium, with a non-metal, which is oxygen. You combine them to form magnesium oxide. That's an ionic compound. Here's another example, potassium, which is a metal, combining with chlorine, which is a non-metal, forming potassium chloride, which is an ionic compound. Another way this can happen is if you have a metal oxide with water to form a hydroxide salt. So metal oxide, for example, sodium oxide, add that with water, it's going to form sodium hydroxide. Okay. A different pattern would be a non-metal oxide with water, and when that combines, it forms an acid. So here's a non-metal oxide, SO3, sulfur trioxide, combining with water to form sulfuric acid. A decomposition reaction is when you take something bigger and you break it. We actually already saw examples of decomposition reaction. And that comes from when we discuss those gas evolution reaction. Remember that I said sometimes these acid-base reactions form these compounds that are unstable and they decompose. So those are examples of decomposition reactions. So carbonate salts tend to decompose into a metal oxide and CO2 gas. So here's calcium carbonate. You can decompose them usually by heat to form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. In the example that we did for the acid-base reaction, the carbonate compound is H2CO3. And remember that that breaks apart into H2O and CO2, right? So here are some other examples of these decomposition reaction. And you want to remember them because they tend to come up again and again. Think about that. These are bigger things that are breaking apart into simpler things. Combustion. Remember that this is specifically defined as when an organic compound reacts with oxygen gas. So what's an organic compound? These are compounds where it contains mostly carbon and hydrogen, and then sometimes it might have one of these elements included, nitrogen, oxygen, or halogen. The reaction that I've written right here, CH4 plus 2O2 goes to CO2 and H2O, is an example of a combustion reaction because I have an organic compound right here, CH4. Again, that's composed mostly of C and H, in this case with no other element, and then it reacts with oxygen. Here's another example of a combustion reaction where I have C, H, and O, in this case, reacting with oxygen. And they produce always the same products, which is CO2 and H2O. Now we're getting to one of the harder reactions in this category, which is single displacement reaction. In this reaction, pattern is you have an element reacting with an ionic compound, and that element displaces the cation in the ionic compound to form 
a new ionic compound and a new element. So A plus BC forming AC plus B. There are different types of single displacement reaction which are shown here with their examples. You want to remember this because you want to be able to predict the products that come out of this single displacement reaction. Now here's the important part. So A plus BC goes to form AC plus B, but not always. It depends on whether A is strong enough to kick out the B because A has to displace B in this case. Whether A will displace B or not depends on something we call the activity of A versus the activity of B. So if A is more active than B, then it will be able to displace B. If A is less active than B, then it will not. How do we know who's more active and who's less active? We use a table that we call the activity series, which is shown right here. And this is basically a ranking of elements and their activity with the elements on the top being the most active and the elements at the bottom being the least active. The other thing to note here about activity is how each element reacts with hydrogen. So hydrogen can appear in three different forms as water in the liquid form, as water in the gas form, and as acids. Depending on the form of the hydrogen, the elements might or might not be able to react with it. So the way these elements are grouped is the following. All of these elements that are above hydrogen, meaning they're more active than hydrogen, can all react with hydrogen as long as the hydrogen is in the acid form. So for example, HCl. Only some of these elements can react with hydrogen in the water gas form. And these are elements that are from here all the way to the top. So all of these guys can react with water in the gas form. These elements right here cannot, okay? And then lastly, only the most active form of elements can react with water in the liquid form. So only these three right here. Everybody else cannot react with water in the liquid form. All of these elements that are below hydrogen cannot react with hydrogen in any form. So let's work through a couple of examples of single displacement reaction to see if we can use this activity series correctly. I'm going to take this example right here, which is nickel and aluminum chloride. So to determine whether there's a product or not, we're going to look at the activity series. Nickel is located right here, and aluminum is located higher than nickel. That means nickel is less active, so therefore nickel cannot displace aluminum, so there is no reaction there. Let's take a look at another example zinc and water. The water that we're given there is water in the gas form. Let's go back to the activity series. So water in the gas form is given here. All the elements from here to here can react with water in the gas form. Zinc happens to be in that group, so that means there's going to be a reaction. So what's the product? This is where you have to remember one of the patterns, which is when metal reacts with water, it forms a base and H2 gas. Water is going to break apart into H plus and OH minus. Because this is single displacement, this guy is going to combine with that forming zinc hydroxide. Zinc forms a plus two ion, so zinc hydroxide would look like that. And the other product is the element form of H, which is H2 gas. So the last example I want to show you is just an example about determining what kind of reaction you have in front of you. And that's given by this problem here at the bottom. It just says classify each reaction as either synthesis, decomposition, single, or double displacement. So I'm just going to do a couple of these examples. This is Na2O plus H2O forming NaOH. So you can see that you are having two different things combining to form one. So that must be a combination reaction or synthesis reaction. And then let me pick another one. I have Pb combining with AgNO3. So that's an element combining with an ionic compound. And the product is an ionic compound with a new element. So that looks like your A plus BC forming AC plus B, which of course is your single displacement pattern. So that's what that one is. 